One of the most exciting applications to be developed in Chapel so far is Arcuda, the friendly data science bear. Uh, as Brad mentioned in his state of the project address, the original driving force for Arcuda was the late Mike Merrill, uh, but it's now under active development by a pretty large group of people at multiple institutions. Arcuda promises to enable high performance extreme scale data analytics and it's already demonstrated impressive scaling results for a bunch of data science algorithms. Um, in this session, you'll hear two presentations that expand Arcuda's capabilities in sparse linear algebra and graph analytics, and a third that uh, prom tr tries to optimize Arcuda workflows by re removing temporary arrays. Um, a reminder, if you have any questions at any time, please just raise your hand in Zoom or type your question in the chat and I'll read it out for the speaker. Okay, so our first speaker for this session is Christopher Hollis from the US Department of Defense. Uh, Christopher is going to be talking about uh, too big to fail massive scale linear algebra with uh, Chapel and Arcuda. Uh, Christopher, are you ready? Yeah, like you said, I'm Chris Hollis, work at the DoD, and I'm going to be talking about AK Sparse, which is a sparse linear algebra add on for Arcuda. And uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's just get right into it. So, uh, in order to, to do their jobs, data scientists need tools that are responsive take only a little bit amount of a little amount of time to prep and get ready to use typically that looks like working with pandas loading your data into a data frame generating a matrix in numpy and then scipy performing some linear algebra on it and then outputting it back out into pandas uh, to do that all over again problem is that those tools that i mentioned right there they slow down considerably as the size of the data scales up and past a certain point, they're completely unusable. Um, but using Arcuda, it's possible to give data scientists the ability to quickly perform linear algebra at previously unheard of scale. And we're talking tens of terabytes of data, hundreds of billions of records on a high performance computer. Um, he talked a little bit about what Arcuda is, but I'll just reiter reiterate a little bit without getting too in the weeds. Um, it's a numpy like Python app that has a chapel backend server. It, its mission statement is essentially to make massive scale HPC data science interactive for users and accessible while prioritizing compatibility with things like Jupyter, Pandas, NumPy. Um, I say that because, uh, because Arcuda allows us to work with such large amounts of data uh, relatively easy. Um, users naturally wanted some linear algebra functionality added to it. Um, and that takes us to AK Sparse. So the goal of AK Sparse is to essentially add functionality similar to SciPy's Sparse library into Arcuda natively. And that's just going to let Arcuda become a more powerful alternative to SciPy when you're working with very, very large matrix operations. So uh, specifically, this means common formats like COO, CSR, and CSE are supported, as well as operations like sparse general matrix multiplication, or SPGEM, as I'm going to call it. Um, and I note that because SPGEM is really going to be the focus of the majority of this presentation going forward, because it really demonstrates the advantages of doing your linear algebra in a distributed way. But uh, first, let's go ahead and talk about why this is even a problem we need to solve. Um, why is this hard and what are we trying to, to achieve here? So yeah, matrix, matrix multiplication is difficult. Um, dense matrices being multiplied is not reasonable for data sets of any particular, uh, particularly large size due to, some, due to its uh, n cubed complexity. So we focus on sparse matrices but even that's still really difficult for a number of reasons here. Uh, there's no way to know how large the solution is going to be before you start working. Um, for example, two uh, sparse matrices could even equal a dense matrix at worst, or just a very large uh, matrix, even larger than either of the inputs at best. Uh, load balancing is also an issue if the inputs are non-uniform have non-uniform density that makes dividing up the work very difficult. And when you're talking about particularly large unstructured matrices, um, some other issues arise. You might not even have the memory to deal with to store the data. 
and uh, communication cost is going to be a bottleneck as you try to pass a lot of very small messages back and forth. AK Sparse addresses these in a couple of ways. Just by using our CUDA, the data issue is not so much of an issue because we're using supercomputers. It uses a different formulation of SPGEM that's an outer product that allows us to gauge the difficulty of the problem before the majority of the work is done. Um, and our CUDA just naturally prioritizes sending smaller, uh, sending larger, fewer messages instead of the smaller, more frequent messages. So let's just take a look at the algorithm and see how AK Sparse does things a little differently. So we're multiplying matrix A by matrix B to get our result C. Um, so in a typical matrix matrix multiplication, that's an inner product. Any given entry of C comes from a row of A and a column of B. This implies CSR for A, CSC for B. Um, but there are issues with this, like we said, load balancing, communication cost, size of the output. So let's take a look at a way to uh, access the data in a more aggregate way. Uh, first, we take a look at a single non-zero entry of A in column I, and we ask ourselves, what pieces of matrix B does this point ever get multiplied by? And that element needs to be multiplied by the row I of matrix B. And this means that that single element of A contributes to row I of the result. And now if we look at a single row of I, we can ask ourselves what part of matrix A does that get multiplied by? And we notice that the elements of that row I of B will only ever be multiplied by non-zeros of the corresponding column of A. And then those results can appear anywhere in the result matrix C and it yields a rank one matrix contribution to C that needs to be aggregated later. And this leads to our plan with AK Sparse. So here we have the algorithm written in pseudocode and in the actual Python code. I included this mostly just to show how relatively simple the implementation is using our CUDA. Uh, but now we can talk about some of the highlights of this algorithm. So the CSC and the CSR's positions in AK Sparse's version of SPGEM are reversed. And that's what makes it an outer product instead of an inner product. Once those are set up, finding the places where those non-zero entries align is computationally pretty easy. Then a rank one COO matrix is produced by each multiplication of a row by a column. And all of the data from that needs to be sorted. And that brings us to that last arrow there, the most important one. It's This is the hardest part of the formulation where we need to unshuffle all of that data using a single large sort. And this lets us take advantage of our CUDA's message aggregation to uh, minimize the communication cost there. So this is a really, really difficult step, but it's one that our CUDA is particularly well suited for, hence why all of the work has been offloaded onto this one step. Um, and it's able you're able to parallelize uh, this step pretty well. Um, additionally, in cases where the size of the work is too large for even a supercomputer to handle, um, there's a natural way to chop up the problem. So for example, we can take the left half of A and the top half of B and work with those independently of their corresponding right and bottom halves. And you can just do that um, recursively and split it up anyway. All you have to do is recombine the results to get your final um, resulting matrix C. And as a bonus, because of the way we've um, reworked the algorithm, uh, you're able to know how difficult the problem is going to be early on in the process. So you can cut the problem in half at that point before you've attempted the majority of the work. And you can also do this recursively for bigger problems to make them more manageable. So if there are, I went a little bit quickly there, but if you take away four things from that whole rundown, it's that um, in this new formulation of the SPGEM algorithm, the uh, most of the work has been offloaded to one very difficult, very intensive group by operation, but ARCUDA is particularly well suited for that counting the number of multiplications and hence the general difficulty of the problem. It can be done and is easy. It happens early in the process. 
You can avoid load balancing issues with recursive splitting. And just by nature of running on HPC, it um, can handle much, much larger amounts of data than the traditional uh, SPGM algorithm that's used by SciPy. So here we have some of our results here, just a, some, some rough results of SciPy running on a home computer, SciPy running on an HPC, and Arcuda running on that same HPC. And for some details, that uh, SciPy is running on one shared memory compute node on a large Cray system. Arcuda is running on 10 two terabyte nodes with dual socket InfiniBand. And essentially, the large takeaway here is that Arcuda on an HPC allows problems to be completed by an order of magnitude larger than SciPy. Um, and what you're seeing here is a pretty hard limit for SciPy. It's running on the largest computer that it's reasonably going to run on. But the numbers here represent the floor for Arcuda because it, it's scalable beyond what's shown here, given more nodes and some optimizations. Um, and to demonstrate that, here's a, a bit of a more difficult problem where we're doing a A times A transpose on an adjacency matrix for a small world graph. Um, this is 77 million by 77 million um, matrix with 620 million non-zeros. And because it comes from net data, it's one of the harder difficulty, uh, harder density patterns you might practically encounter. The distribution is highly non-uniform. Load balancing is going to be an issue. Um, and as you can see here, it's run, it was run on 40 compute nodes on that same uh, machine and had 440 billion multiplies, 300 billion non-zeros in the output. And it took 22 terabytes of memory to compute and store the solution, but all that ran in four minutes. And that was all running in memory and the problem wasn't split up in any way. So again, this represents generally the floor for this implementation and things can be optimized greatly from here. And on that note, um, AK Sparse is open source, as Arcuda is, and it's a work in progress. Um, you can use it in its current state right here at this link. Um, and in the future, we're looking to add additional linear algebra functionality. Um, probably most importantly, there are some optimizations that are in the immediate future uh, to improve the load balancing and implement more of that algorithm on the the chapel side of the Arcuda divide um, so that they're to minimize even more of the communication cost and message passing. Um, and also, uh, we're going to implement the ability to write to disk so you can store even larger amounts of data. And uh, yeah, uh, with all that said, I guess that, that I've reached the end. Any questions? We've got a question in the chat from Thomas Rollinger. Uh, so the question is, how does the sparse general matrix multiply approach work in a general workflow where A and B may be used in other sparse gems as different operands and thus need to be converted to or from different formats like compressed bus row, compressed bus column? More concisely, what's the cost or overhead of going between those different sparse matrix formats? Sure. So um, I, don't, I don't have the actual like numbers on that right now. If you uh, reach out to me, I can I can try to get that for you. But uh, AK Sparse does have the ability to freely convert from one format to another. Um, and because it's running on Arcuda, it's generally going to be quicker than uh, SciPy and other uh, other options at scale. But yeah, you can, oh, you can also reach out to Mike here. Um, he, he's he's helping me, my partner in crime here, to. I'll figure this stuff out but yeah um it, it all of that is implemented into the ak sparse um package as well okay if you have other questions maybe keep writing them into the chat otherwise we might move on with the next speaker thank you for pushing them.